need to wake up and smell the coffee. God don't have no big sins and little sin. Sin is sin. It's all sin. Just like murderers, just like those of you who gossip, God don't have no big sins and little sin. Sin is sin. It's all sin. I am against any lifestyle that interferes and interrupts what God's word has deemed as proper. And that goes for your mama, your daddy, they go for you, your sister, your best friend. Go for my kids, your kids, if it's wrong, it is wrong. God is clear in his word. The person, the people, or the nation that sins, you go meet with God's judgment. That's why this is not going to be a popular sermon. And I may remove myself off the international circuit. But I promise you, I'm going to preach the truth. Now you can drive your Mercedes and you can live in a five bedroom house with a water fountain in your front yard. But if you sin it, you go into hell with your Mercedes and your water fountain. We don't talk about it no more. But the wages of sin is still death. The soul that sinneth shall die. End of the story. Because we done got so hung up in this prosperity stuff. We making folk think that your faith is related to what you drive and where you live. The most faithful people don't have no Mercedes. The most faithful people live in apartments. God help me. Sit down. Why am I talking about this sexual thing? Because that's what happened this week. Next week, I'm going to talk about whatever God leads me. And if you need a part two, that's what you're going to get. Because I don't care nothing about whether you like me or not. I'm trying to do better. Bishop told me I should care, so I'm trying to do better. But I really don't care. I really don't care. I really don't. I really don't care. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. I don't don't need nobody to pop popcorn. I can pop my own popcorn and have a nice chat with myself. Somebody needs to address this. This is crazy. Now what you do in the privacy of your own home, that's your business. But you're going to subject me to your immorality as it relates to sexual and flush sins? No, I'm going to tell you the truth. So I had to find a way to encourage myself. Because I was getting ready to get depressed. Because that's just like the enemy. He wants you to think that it's 
It's just a few of us out here trying to live like that. People are not trying to live like that anymore. That is just too hard. After all, God knows. And if you're not careful, that spirit will jump on you. And you'll start wondering what's it all for. And what's the use? Because the more you tell people to cut it out and quit it and get yourself together and God loves you, the crazier they act. They'll make you think it's something wrong with you. That's another lie on the pit of hell. There's nothing wrong with us. God expects us to live holy. So I had to encourage myself. We were in Oakland, me and Crystal, this week. And when I got through watching all this, I said to Crystal, Surely, we are living in the last days. Now, if you can't see that, you're either blind, stupid, or crazy. So let me try to comfort and strengthen some other believers who understand that our biggest fight is yet before us. You ain't been talked about yet. You ain't been made to feel bad and have your feelings hurt yet. You haven't had to really take a stand and be the opposite of what everybody else is. Not yet, but your days are numbered. Slap your neighbor a five and tell him, stop playing church. Do your neighbor on the other side. Say, stop playing church. Well, let me tell you something. I don't care. Keep playing it because in a little while, we're going to know who's who and who's just playing. Because some of you ain't nothing but players. You've been players all your life. So you came in the church and you're a player right here. But God is getting ready to shift this thing. And in a little while, we're going to know who the players are. So Peter, <laughs> in First Peter 5, sets up for us what some of the Christians were feeling like in Peter's day. Because you do know there's nothing new under the sun. And both first and second Peter letters were written to brethren, which gives us indication that these letters were not written to sinners. They were written to Christians who were being plagued by strenuous trials, persecution, tribulation, and struggle. So they, in essence, felt a lot like we're feeling, some of us, today. That we're fighting against unbeatable odds. But let me serve notice to you that no matter how difficult the afflictions may be right now, what the enemy is trying to do is to destroy your faith in God. <laughs> Satan then, like Satan is doing now, was trying to overturn their faith in God and draw them into areas of sin. The enemy ain't happy because you're walking with God. So he's going to send some strong trials. Some bitter persecution. He's going to set some principles in the world that we live in. That will make us second guess what we know is right with God. 